Cobb. Mm. Yes. All right. So, all right. Now, with that prestigious lean in, man, I am so excited. Hey. We finally got not just the Spider Man movie from Marvel, but a twink. Uh, right. Okay. <laughs> For different reasons, I am <laughs> okay, really me, excited. You, you're excited. Here. Okay, I'll tell you why I, I haven't been. Because the last two We're were talking about just, Spider-Man Homecoming, by the way. Yes, yes. not uh, The Amazing Spider-Man, which was the last, was no. the last reboot. And what I stopped watching was when Spider-Man was doing skateboard tricks to a Coldplay song. <laughs> Honestly, that's when I... It's mean, like, when, when and it's uh, not a knock on Coldplay, and it's not a knock on skateboarding. It's a knock on putting those together in front of on the screen and just looking at it and going, this is happening. No, you're right. Right it, it, now. And that's, yeah, I gave up. I didn't see Anyone well, who hasn't seen that in the amazing Spider-Man starring Andrew Garfield, they mm -hmm. tried to remake Footloose for about five minutes. They did. Yeah. And they had a whole scene where he goes to this abandoned warehouse uh, or hangar. And he does and he just this starts, thing, but it's, yeah, he's dancing, he's skateboarding and they've got like Coldplay in the background. The kingdom like, come. So they didn't yeah, learn from Spider-Man I was going to say, oh, shout absolutely. out to Spider-Man 3, the, emo dancing oh, Spider-Man. No, How's the pie? This. So good. We do not condone this. <laughs> That's and one now of my favorite movies of all time, guys. And now we don't have to. The Spider-Man Homecoming, a movie that was actually by Marvel starring Tom Holland, who this is his second run as Spider-Man. We saw him the first time. In yeah. uh, Captain America: Civil War, yep. he had yep. a uh, brief, but Stole very the scene, scene. That too, and it, yeah, like, absolutely. it was a perfect, perfect introduction mm -hmm. to you. Know what I mean? It made him like yeah. seem like a kid too. I mean, real quick, no great. spoiler review mm -hmm. of Spider-Man: Homecoming. Yes. My girlfriend is a Spider-Man cosplayer, and our review is that she got back to the hotel at the Anime Con and mm -hmm. immediately had to put on the Spider-Man costume and jump around <laughs> in excitement because <laughs> that's how that's much the, she loves Spider-Man. That's the review right there. She actually. had to she yeah, had to immediately night, be Spider-Man yeah. and do a backflip on the bed because it was so good that she had to just enjoy the Spider-Man is more. Mm. Yes. Yep. Now, yep. just breaking down the movie real quick in itself, this is the story of Spider- First of all, they're not telling the origin story. So Thank good. Oh, God. my God. Guys, no origin story. Again, this is not really a spoiler because you kind of know that from trailers. Yes, exactly. There's none of that like, oh, my Uncle Ben died. No, mm. I'm seeing. It's like Superman. I got bit by a spider once. I didn't need five hours <laughs> to talk about in it. A very, <laughs> in a very, very quick, at the very beginning, yes. uh, intro sort of the making of for the yeah. villain. Just yeah, very like, quick. Well, though. that's another thing that, that I good. really, he really was good. Very sympathetic. You, I like you him. get a villain that is a person. Mm -hmm. yep. You get and this again, keeping keeping it light, keeping it so people go out and enjoy. You, you a get a villain <laughs> that you understand <laughs> why they're doing what they're doing mm -hmm. more than just I'm evil. Like you get mm -hmm. why this character yeah. is moving towards supervillainy and why this character has this specific clash with Spider-Man. And it, what it does is, more so, I think, than any previous Spider-Man movie, it starts building him a true rogues gallery. Yeah, and un unlike the first Spider-Man movies with uh, Tobey Maguire, yeah. all the villains, or I think most of the villains, became villains because, just like how Spider-Man got his powers, through an accident. And that's well, kind of most this, most of them. Let's not forget Bones. Oh, it's not like, oh, it's not like Batman and Robin. Bones don't do this to me. I fell on a plant. Don't do this to me. Don't. Okay. All so right. I mean, like, <laughs> so, I mean, like it's, Stop it, it's right. it, was, it was great <laughs> in the fact that you know the new villain for this is yeah. not like by accident becomes a villain. No, so, very is correct. it Michael Let's, Keaton too? Uh, yeah. Okay. Keaton. In his very best quick, role since multiplicity. Well, well no, no, this was actually a very phenomenal. good role for him. Michael really, Keaton, so Michael, really good. I mean, really what good. isn't he good in? But like, Michael Keaton plays Adrian Toomes, also known as the Vulture. In this movie, they've rewritten his origin not to be the aging, um, the aging. Uh, well, I don't know, septuagenarian. He was an old guy, yeah. uh, looking to find you know, like a fountain of youth type thing through uh, powers and genetics, but rather as a sympathetic figure who's working. Now, first of all, everything in this movie is a direct result of. Uh, the events of the, the Avengers. Uh, was it the attack on New York? Yeah, the, the, the Battle York. of New York, as they call the it Battle in the Marvel Universe. Thank you. Yep. The Battle of New York from the first Avengers movie. So seems like everyone's hung the... up on that thing. Who cares? Well, everyone. The... Yeah, it's almost like <laughs> we all. Only a billion people died. Only right? a billion people died, and we learned that aliens exist. But like, you know, whatever. <laughs> so it's and, weird. And they had a little bit of uh, Ultron in there too. Yeah. Uh, yes. Ultron yep. references. There's some Ultron right. references. So... This did a great job tying into other movies in a way that also didn't feel forced. There wasn't like, here's yeah. a clip from another movie. It felt very natural. It like ben it takes Affleck place in New York. Yeah. It was Avengers it one, makes, two, and Civil War. It makes sense that actions that took place in New York would be referenced, but they were done in a way that felt very natural to what the characters yeah. were doing. And it helped set up 
the story, you know, the background. To the, the whole story. film was very yeah, engaging. The that. pacing was also, I think, I mm-hmm. want to take a note to discuss. Unlike the previous two movies with Garfield, who I felt was an okay Spider-Man I and a meh Spider-Man. Peter Parker. His Peter Parker was a tool. This yeah. had both excellent spider man if that makes sense, and the mm-hmm. Peter Parker aspect was very, like, a kid, but a smart kid. Like, mm-hmm. something that you really yeah. get is, you know, Spider-Man at his core is a brilliant person. Yes. I think it was because yeah. there wasn't a separation of Spider-Man and Peter Parker. It was the same person. Yeah, and it felt throughout. that the pacing of the film in that way, I never felt when watching, to put it one way, when watching a Peter Parker part of the movie, mm-hmm. I never was sitting there going, oh, okay, but when is he going to be Spider-Man? You know, oh, Or I never was watching Spider-Man action moments going, okay, but what's happening? What's the plot? There was an excellent balance and meshing of the identity of Peter Parker and Spider-Man yeah. that we really haven't seen in a way. For example, the Tobey Maguire movies, the whole core of those movies is, how can I love Mary Gene, if I'm Spider-Man, where responsibility. Well, so let's not forget, Tobey Maguire's Peter Parker was kind of a whiny bitch. Tom Holland oh, yeah. is an actual kid Don't who we see try to balance. Hey, he was man. <laughs> Stop that. Uh, Tom Holland. Look, if I could just have a movie of Alfred Peter Molina, Parker. though. <laughs> Okay, you Shout out well. to Alfred Molina for Tom being Holland the best Spider-Man villain. Tom Holland a spectacular performance, no pun intended, as, Spider- as Spider-Man and as Peter Parker. I was actually very impressed with his presentation of this character because I bought him as a nerd. I bought him as not a direct social outcast, but somebody who fell into the characteristics that we've come to know of Peter Parker. He's very intelligent. He's not that uh, popular socially, but he's not completely unpopular. He has friends. They're just kind of a group of nerd misfits. friends. And when they presented, like, the acting in this was phenomenal on all parts. We called up uh, Michael Keaton as the villain. Great yeah, role, he's a very national sympathetic, though, but so. also, let's not forget his henchman, um, uh, Bokeem Woodbine. Oh, well, okay, I'll get to that. Bokeem some- Woodbine's in this movie? Bokeem Woodbine, yes. my friend, yes. Oh. There's, I, I want to say a little about them, so let me, let me hold off for okay, a second. Right. Because the kids, this is the first Spider-Man movie where everyone who's supposed to be in high school actually looked like high school kids because they were freaking kids. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're so we're so we're so but uh, the acting, the kid that played Flash, there was a big backlash about, oh, he's brown. We can't have that. Flash Thompson's supposed to be white. No, Flash it's Thompson perfect. was written in the 60s to follow an archetype of who would bully a character like Peter yeah, Parker. The 60s jock. Exactly. Yeah. And we've actually come into a new generation of this. We still look at it like those same tropes of old movies we saw when we grew, were growing up. We are at least, at least, everyone in this room is at least twice the age of the target demographic for this movie. And Thanks. it was written very well. <laughs> Look, you're old. I think like you're the right. rest of us just do. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, but the target demographic for this is yep. kids around 15, you know, 20, those that can relate directly to the young Spider-Man and Peter Parker and the archetypes that they fu- that they face in their day-to-day high school experience Our is very people? different from ours. It's very different from the uh, our brown people. <laughs> it's very different getting th- from those of the original writers of Spider-Man. You know, like the generational shift is reflected in this. I caught on to that, and I appreciated the hell out of it. And I want to emphasize that with Flash Thompson, who wasn't just this this random Aryan strong man who somehow made it on the football team. Well, he's uh, he's actually an, he's an intelligent <laughs> guy, well, also but he's also a mi- dick. Well, also keeping in mind that they're at a science and technology high school, so mm-hmm. even the jocks are like no jocks. No, and true, I really appreciated no, I really appreciated that that there's still who, like a bully mm-hmm. character, but they're still like on the trivia team. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And phenomenal for, for uh, performances all from the characters who Everyone were normally was really minor. Yep. Mm-hmm. The characters who were normally minor. Uh, Is Liz, Aunt May was uh, Marissa Tomei. Yeah, she was Tomei. great. She's people, such a babe. There's yeah. been some backlash on her age. Also, like, what is she? She's in her like at least early mid fifties. Like, she's yeah. not that young. If you're looking at it in her age relation to how old Peter Parker is in this, I don't it's a big, think it's a big difference. difference. I don't think yeah. having yeah. her be no, you know younger yeah, than the gray hair Aunt May that we think of. Mm-hmm. But, like, she's not much a big age difference than Sally Fields was in, you know, the no, last incarnation. No, no. Yeah. And one thing I did notice about uh, Aunt May is the running gag in this, which I thought I'd get tired of, but I never did, is everyone's trying to smash. Mm. Everyone's trying Every, to smash. Everybody, everybody, everybody <laughs> oh, like, Peter so Parker funny. hits on Aunt May a couple of times in Civil War, and it's See, amusing. See, when you're a kid in growing this, up like that, you got to learn how to throw hands, you're never going to survive. You mean, you Yo, mean Tony Stark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in in this every like you see the whole neighborhood is is on that they know what's up. <laughs> uh, I, I you okay now right back to Bokeem Woodbine. <laughs> Thank God, this movie is what took, I'm waiting for. This movie took great attention to detail for Marvel fans without completely pandering. Can I ask one if, question uh, that might be a spoiler, you, real quick? Uh, does he survive? 
Bokeem? Yeah. He survives. Okay. Yes. Every, right. every, everyone survives. Thank God. Everyone survives. Bokeem survived the movie. And this That's movie, actually a, a big key point that we should tie back into. Uh, okay. Well, I'll let Johnny uh, touch on that. Let me just uh, get this out real quick. If you're a Marvel fan, there's Easter eggs all over this sucker. And not things that they're ham-fistedly forcing in. Just little tidbits they drop here and there that make sense to the story and make sense to the actual production of the locations where they are. One thing that always pissed me off is when, especially watching the old Spider-Man cartoon, they're out in the middle of nowhere. Spider-Man shoots a web up in the open sky, and he's just swinging all over the place. In this one, he gets stranded in an area where there's no tall buildings, and it actually has a scene of, how do I deal with this practically? Because I can't just like swing from you know a skyscraper to skyscraper. That was mm -hmm. awesome. And then if you're a fan of movies that have you know one villain, two villains, or you hate the ones that have, well, you got three, four, it's unnecessary. This movie had five. Actually... This movie technically had six villains, what? if you want. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, if you're I, really, yeah. If you're a Marvel fan, you'd identify them. If not, it had two villains. We don't mean like they're the main villains of the it. movie, but it had like characters that either are exactly. or become Exactly. All right, you're going to have to fill villains. me in later. Well, yeah. it's, it's, no, it's not a spoiler yeah. to call them out because, I mean, again, if you're a hardcore fan, you'll notice them right yeah. away. If you're not, you won't have to worry about it. But there's... Scorpion. Um, there's... Scorpion. Well, well, step by step here. There's the vulture, obviously. I there's the shocker. He's got the tattoo on his neck, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, yeah, no so spoiler. Down, There's down, a man down, with a large scorpion down. on his neck, guys. Let's not. Yeah. Uh, this isn't a spoiler. You look at him for All two right. seconds and you're like, oh, hey, guy. With I large should realize that. If you know, okay, yeah. slow down. Okay. Well, pace yourself. But there's, okay. there's the vulture. Yep. There's the shocker. Yep. You yeah. mentioned the scorpion. Uh, there's also the tinker. Yep. Mm -hmm. If you're uh, quick enough to catch it, there is also um, the prowler. Yeah. Spider-Man's yeah. got a lot of villains, right? If you're quick enough to catch it, and here's one, here's one that if you're if you're really good, if you're really like anal retentive like I am, uh, you may even catch uh, Montana. Montana is an old, oh, old Spider-Man villain. Yeah, he's an old, old Spider-Man villain. I mean, a lot of these are probably not going to go anywhere, but it's the fact. The point we're making is there's a lot of care put in yes. this movie, and it, when we say Easter eggs, also it's mm. not like that kind of like shoehorned in, like oh look at this, like mm. it really had a lot of content that yes. was both heartwarming and you know oh, there were yes. some and, fight scenes that had me like on the edge of my seat, like not it's to cut really you off just real quick, just to interject, uh, just for you, Bokeem Woodbine is in this movie. And he's not playing anonymous, random, nameless henchman who dies in like five minutes. Yeah. He's playing a legit role. That's this isn't 3,000 Miles to Graceland. You know? No, no, no. <laughs> that's still sympathetic. Like, everyone has legit motivations, including Bokeem Woodbine, who was not the key villain. You'd think only, like, the big bad would get a, um, a storyline that you'd want to pay attention to? Yeah. Nope. Nope. Bokeem Woodbine does as well. Perfect. Continue, please. Oh, no, I was just saying there's something that I enjoyed. Uh... A lot of the times, and this is a big problem that I honestly had with like Iron Man 3, mm -hmm. where you want to pay attention to plot or action, and they did not feel like a coherent film. Mm -hmm. uh, something that I found really problematic with Iron Man 3 was that the action aspects of it felt very shoehorned into a very interesting plot, to be honest. Well, because I think that's, I think you're exactly right on that, but I think that's because that director is wanted to make a talky type movie, but yes, it had to have but action. But then it had to it, have so action. Had to this was it. an excellent balance of engaging action mm -hmm. that had the Spider-Man feel, if you will, which to me is that athleticism, almost dance-like movements of Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, the actor has a dance background, which I think is something very important to acknowledge. That is that... when he two-stepped on top of the Chrysler. <laughs> I was wondering. No, but it's that. something that this movie really nailed. Also, Tobey Maguire is too big to be Peter Parker physically. And I know that sounds crazy but because he's not that big of a guy. But the build of Spider-Man is not a burly person. You know, obviously it varies artist to artist over the years, but Spider-Man doesn't bulk up. He's not Captain America. He doesn't get bitten by a, you know, workout spider. <laughs> and no, but if you think about the way that Spider-Man moves... been searching moves, for workout spiders for years. <laughs> <laughs> but if you think about the way that Spider-Man moves and the way that he uses his webbing and the way that he uses his powers, you want someone to have that almost, you know, acrobatics it's almost it. refreshing yeah. too and that they do that because i'm sick of like these guys it's like how many protein shakes did well, you have to drink exactly to get into, you know look you know, not everything has to be a rob liefeld drawing like that's yeah. <laughs> it's important that this film kind of has also Spider all character have, types like, spider-man's best friend in this movie and is a tiny, larger character bird waist. Yeah. and like a large is a, is a larger character he's a, he's a, he's a big boy mm. and he's not made fun of for it 
Do you know what I mean? The character's mm. not laughed at. He doesn't have any, you know, silly fat guy moments. Like he's he's a great character. Yes, he he's is. an intelligent character, mm. an engaging character, and a good friend. And it's something that it doesn't feel like, oh, here's the fat sidekick. And that's something that I thought was really meaningful to see in this film that, as you said, is very much geared toward teens, mm. that there was a wide array of diversity of body yeah. type, diversity of, you know, just all, you know, colors, creeds, whatever's mm. and it felt like New York City. This is the and most that's something diverse... that I haven't felt from the Spider-Man franchise, who mm. is a boy from Queens, and as someone who, who has grew up in that area, you could, who has a butt, you could just jump a quarter. He's a real hot ant. Just, yeah, we can all relate to this. No, but real, but really, in, 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 in conclusion, for me though, this felt like you know they well named Spider-Man: Homecoming. Like here is your Spider-Man. Here yeah. is Spider-Man has arrived. What I when I made a little Facebook post after the movie for my no spoiler review, it just said a fun, engaging film with action that takes place mostly in daylight. Yes. Yeah. And to me, that's Spider Man. Oh, totally. Yeah. Totally. It, not uh, grim dark, not brooding. <laughs> not dancing I, down the streets no, of I'll Manhattan. Take that one. And, that and okay. I think, oh no, stop it. We do not condone that. I think what takes this film so beyond good. just being a Spider Man film and just being like one of the best uh superhero yeah. films mm -hmm. is the attention to detail that they did thinking about and, and i'm talking about the writing not necessarily the character of peter parker because mm -hmm. it's the consequences that he sort of struggles with to yeah. to fully realize that iron man's constantly sort of pouring him out on mm -hmm. but rather the consequences that the writers are taking in consideration as they are uh creating these scenes and as they are creating the storyline they're always thinking of what are the repercussions what does this mean to the character in the storyline because throughout the whole film it's not it's not about catch the bad guys and do the uh, and you know save the day it's about save the people first save the yeah. innocent people first mm -hmm. treat them well like be the Spider-Man, don't be like this blockbuster, it, you know, I'm going to punch the bad guy in the face and everything. Right. It references like some key Spider-Man moments. And yeah. again, no spoiler, but it references yeah. some pivotal moments that Spider-Man fans will recognize from monumental moments from the comics. Yeah, that one I time mean, when he climbed up the wall. This, <laughs> <laughs> but there, there's, you could, there's a moment in the film that I will not say what it was because it's a major spoiler, but when you see it, if you are someone that has read Spider-Man comics, it mm. takes a classic panel and really makes it into this, you know, heart in your throat moment where you are not only rooting for the superhero, but you're Don't rooting for Peter Parker as a person. Mm. And Uncle that's the humanity that previous incarnations have lacked. With with just other uh, superhero movies, like you look at the Avengers, you look at you know Captain America. I'm a like huge Thor them, fan, and I just don't care about the character the Thor in the MCU. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> there's things blowing up all the time. The there's way, cities getting right. destroyed. There's there's rubble everywhere, and none of them care. They just want to smash the bad guy in the face. And none of them like are really the care about thing. saving yeah. the actual the little people. Yeah. yeah. No, all I'll say, final thing, just to wrap this up. Um, the performances were phenomenal. The script was phenomenal. The production was incredible. Everything looked authentic and gave you a sense of this could actually happen in the world with this level of technology the greatest and yeah. also it was damned amusing i laughed my ass off i damn near cried at some scenes i was very impressed with the acting of children with the acting of adults michael keaton i think gives his best performance since birdman yes um i Intense. would recommend yeah. anyone see this so freaking highly i, I i'm planning to see it again Okay. Like, like it's yeah, just, I want to see it again. It's yeah. one, it's one of the yeah. best superhero movies to Ever. begin with. It Ever. ain't no Ninja Turtles one, no. <laughs> no, uh, it's serious. I mean, I'm serious. Oh, it is no Ninja it's Turtles okay, one, but, but I would it, jokes oh, jokes aside, mm -hmm. I would put it with Ninja Turtles one really? as a good New York. Superhero because movie that New York that honors is Ninja Turtles. New, one. I'm not being one, not no, being no. Funny. This is not being cute, not being funny. One of the most important characters in Ninja Turtles is New York City. Yes. One of the most important characters in Spider-Man: Homecoming right. is the backdrop of New York City. All right, you saw me. And the soundtrack. Well, they had the Ramones in there and everything. They did. Like, they did. They also had Raffi. They didn't have Coldplay, they, they so that's Raffi. all that really matters. I, anyway, I will Jesus, go on to you say you stop that. Herb, have we happened. sold you? Yeah, I'm gonna shut up. Yeah. I'm going totally going to check it out. All right, cool. If you have anything to say about this movie, you want to uh, nerd out with us or let us know how wrong we are and how, you know, messed up your uh, your, Marcus, your motorcycle accident was. You okay? Mm. 
All right, well then, uh, hit us up at geekdownradio at gmail.com or check us out on twitch.tv slash thegeekdown if you want to chime in. Uh, well, next show.